All right, a quick tutorial or coaching point here that uh, I witnessed one of my lessons last night. This is uh, senior player Zach Ryan, lives in Indiana, he's committed to Georgia Tech, a lot of ability in this hitter. And his issue right now is he gets forward of center with a pretty aggressive forward push to create momentum and bat speed into the ball. So you can see how he's getting forward of center here. So tremendous power and bat speed, uh, susceptible to an off-speed pitch without body control hopefully a little bit back of center at foot down. What we did for that is talk about the upper body resistance slowing the lower body down and trying to keep him back of center. So we used the feet together step and hit drill and I really exaggerated him pulling back hard aggressively to feel a lot of tension across the core to help keep his weight slightly back of center where he was going to turn from that position. So you're seeing a much better lower body position here as he coils and rides out, maintains the coil, and now he's, hit, he's ready to rota rotate or turn around his back hip. So he's still in his backside rather than drifting forward in the pelvis into the front side. That's when you're hitting with momentum. Here he's hitting with spring. He's hitting with whip. He's hitting where the swing should begin around the rear hip. Now in both of these, it, it, with a 2D camera placed right from the side, it looked like his hands are too far beyond his back elbow. It's kind of an illusion with your eye. It's because he has his torso turned too much. And his torso is going to turn a little more in this drill because I told him to really exaggerate the pullback to try to create the feeling of staying in his backside. Now, once he creates that feeling, now I can get him into a launch position where he stays a little more square. But the exaggeration point was, this is what you have to do. Your hands feeling like they're, they're going back against the stride foot. The upper body slowing the lower body's momentum. So they're working away from each other at the same time, but they're working away from each other with some force. Your upper body's trying to resist the lower body during its walkout, and it continues to resist the lower body during the initial turn. And then you get that feeling of tightness around the core, and eventually that's going to slot the rear elbow as the core begins to end its resistance of the turn. So really all, all the body does during the stride process, your lower body's resisting the turn, it's maintaining its coil. Once you get into heel plant, the lower body begins its turn, the rear leg is opening the hip chassis, his core is still resisting at this point. See how the hips are open, but the shirt is still closed. And the upper body, the scap, is still resisting even as the core is making its turn. He's still in scap load at this point. And then when he reaches the body line, that's about the time when his scap ends the resistance and he's ready to release the barrel into the ball. So you keep hearing the word resistance over and over again, and that's what's happening here. The body is constantly resisting itself, its urge to turn as long as we can, and we build up more stored energy that allows him to get the spring around his rear hip versus trying to hit a ball with forward push and momentum, where you can hit a ball that way. I said that's going to be a great slow pitch softball swing one day because you're trying to hit with momentum at that point, but you don't have to worry about off-speed pitches and making late adjustments to movement on balls. So... Coaching point for the night, just learning how the upper body resistance can aid the lower body in staying around the rear hip and in the backside.